All right. Shall we begin? Yeah. All right. Welcome back to our last panel, right? Um, and I'll be moderating it. Uh, and just like with the other panels, we'll have the papers, all papers first, and then questions. And uh, please mute your uh, mics. And uh, when you have a question, you can use the thumbs up button or just raise your hand. Or you can also write your questions in the chat. Um, our first presenter is... Uh, Marat, uh, please announce a change. Uh, yes, so the, Alex Morshkin will unfortunately not be uh, participating. And so uh, this panel will include um, uh, three speakers. And so the last two panels have merged into, into this last, uh, last one. Our uh, first presenter is uh, Helena Rimon and uh, immigrated to Israel in 1987, teaches Hebrew literature at Ariel University, uh, published a number of articles in Russian, Hebrew and English, uh, monographs the time and place of Mikhail Bakhtin in Hebrew in 2000, the Russian formalist centrality of the margins, also in Hebrew in 2007, the Jewish literature in modern times in Russian, edited the following books, Israeli Liter Literature in the Russian Translation Anthology, uh, Agnon's Short Stories in the Russian Translation, and the collective volume, Intellectuals and Tarot, The Fatal Attraction. Uh, her paper is titled, Genre Preferences of Israeli-Russian Fantastic. Please. Good evening. It was an, a, a very interesting day. I hope you have a little bit strength to listen to my lecture. And I want to ask you, do you see the table that I prepared? Yes? Okay. So in this presentation, I will discuss fantastic literature written in Israel in Russian. Since Russian is really fantastic, is translational, transnational, to my mind, it will be of interest to examine the choices of genre made by Russian Israeli fantastic authors against the backdrop of the genre systems in their country of origin, that is fantastic written in Russia, and their country of arrival, Israeli fantastic written in Hebrew. I'd like to mention that my work is going on. So maybe there are texts that meanwhile are absent from this survey, they will appear in the future. Presentations limits do not permit me to dwell on theoretical definitions. So let me therefore only mention that according to Aristotle, the task of the poet is to speak not of what had happened, but of what might, might happen, of the possible in terms of, I quote, probability or necessity. The difference uh, uh, between the historian and the literal writer is that while the former recounts what has taken place, the latter, uh, uh, the writer, narrates what might have happened. This definition works concerning almost any literary text with the exception of fantastic literature. Fantastic literature is about what not only did not take place, but what also cannot take place. These incredible events may be described as happening in the present or in unpredictable future or even in unpredictable past, such as Russian-Israeli writer Daniel Kruger mystic detective, sto de detective stories from ancient, ancient ba Babylonian life. It would therefore be correct to define fantastic not as a literary genre, but as a particular literary dimension. Literary genres functioning in this dimension first appeared and developed outside it. Thus, there are fantasy adventure novels, Bildungs Roman, heroic epics, and detective stories. In enormous corpus of the 20th and 21st century, fantastic is uh, uh, the genre usually called fantasy, a fairy, fairy tale 
for adults in which fantastic events are set in motion by magic and develop mythological motifs and archetypal storylines. Most of the texts that I will mention belong to this type. There are besides some special genres which exist along the border between the fantastic and more standard literary genres and which also often exceed the bounds of what can be utopia and uh, dystopia. Uh, the famous motto of Theodor Herzl, if you will eat, it's not a fairy tale, is all about it. The, the utopian or the dystopian invention of an author can turn into reality for better or for worse. I would like to stress that uh, uh, the concept of a general system as conceived of by Tignano will not be pertinent to our case. However, as you will see from my survey, it becomes possible to speak of a certain general repertoire of the Russian Israeli fantastic literature. In this presentation, I want to show that some genres are not popular in certain literatures, while others, by contrast, are extremely productive, such as the quasi-historical epic in Russian literature or the dystopia in the Hebrew, consideration of these general preferences in the context of the three literatures reveals interesting things about the communities typified by them. I have no time here to speak about gender theory, so I'll only mention that as Bartin has shown, the various gender indicators usually form a system and correlate with each other. And the most important indicator indicator for Bartin is chronotope, that is time and space of the plot. And uh, uh, this is uh, 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 the base of uh, 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 this table that I wanted to sort their uh, uh, works that were published uh, during the uh, uh, 20s and the beginning of the 21st century uh, in Hebrew, in Israel, in Russian, in Russia, and in Russian, in Israel. So we start our survey of fantastic genres with a huge group of fantasy genres. Uh, uh, in this kind of text, uh, uh, the action is concentrated inside home. Uh, 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 this is the first type of fantasy genres, the urban fantasy. Uh, uh, the action is concentrated in home or apartment pubs, theaters, hotels, courtyards, and streets. The particular chronotope of urban fantasy is in closed space. And it's different of uh, the chronotopes of other genres like adventure no novels and fantastic epics. Uh, uh, some of uh, the novels of the type are uh, novels of warming up of uh, uh, Roman. Uh, the others are uh, like uh, uh, for instance, novels of uh, 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 Denis Sobolev uh, are less concentrated on the uh, 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 growing up of a uh, person. Uh, uh, but uh, these texts are related uh, to uh, certain cities like, uh, for instance, uh, uh, the novel of Denis Sobolev, uh, uh, Jerusalem, or his novel, uh, 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 The Legends of the Mount Carmel, uh, the collection of stories by Yaakov Schechter, Kabbalah and Demons, uh, 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 related to Rehovot, uh, uh, the novel of Olga Fix, The Dark Child, 
Tumne Dita is all about Jerusalem also. And uh, 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 it is interesting to note that urban fantasy is part of all three literatures, Israeli and Hebrew, Russian, and uh, uh, Russian-Israeli literature. But there is a special genre of uh, urban fantasy uh, that doesn't exist in Hebrew, but it exists in uh, uh, Russian, in Russia, and also in Israel. Uh, very interesting uh, texts like Hasidic detective story of Alexander Rybalka, or uh, cases of magic uh, of Daniel Kluger, uh, 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 several books of Pavel Amnuel, like Secrets of Detective Man and so on, belong to this genre. Why it doesn't exist in Hebrew, I don't know. There is also another kind of alternative history. Uh, 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 no, I, I, I want to start to <coughs> continue here. Uh, 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 another kind of uh, 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 genre uh, is uh, the adventure novel uh, on the background of magic and uh, 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 mystery. Uh, this is the most popular genre in Russian, fantastic literature. Uh, uh, there are series uh, uh enormous uh, amount of series of novels about magic magicians and witches inhabiting fast fantastical worlds lands and states uh, in hebrew its genre is represented by a rather modest number of works uh, 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 and uh, in russian israeli fantastic this, this genre is represented by even fewer books, namely by a single novel, uh, A Thousand Years on Loan uh, by Daniel Kluger and Alexander uh, 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 Rybalka. Uh, and uh, 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 the next type of the fantastic genre is alternative history. Sometimes uh, they call it uchronia. This is history that at some important turning point veers away from the direction we know. And there are certain bifurcation points. Uh, uh, this gem of alternative history uh, appear sometimes in Hebrew literature, very rare, and uh, uh, it uh, doesn't appear, we don't see it after 60s. It, uh, 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 there, there is no novels of alternative uh, history in, in Hebrew, uh, uh, especially uh, the, the only type of uh, alternative history was uh, the type of uh, the novel uh, uh, without magic, rationalist novel. Also in Russian, there is a number of the novels of that kind. The, the most popular and well-known is The Island of Crimea of Vasily Aksyonov. And uh, there is a novel of such a kind also in Hebrew, a thousand years on loan, uh, something that uh, maybe uh, is uh, a little bit uh, like uh, an alternative history. Uh, a, 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 the close but different genre uh, is alternative past plus fantasy, fantastic quasi-historic adventure novel. 
that I should say that this is one of the most popular fantastic genres in Russian that are published in Russia. Uh, uh, and in uh, Russian Hebrew literature, there is only two authors that try themselves in this genre. Uh, Alexander Barenberg, I think nobody here heard this name because this author lives in Israel, but published only in Russia. Uh, and uh, uh, I think this works uh, are of rather low quality and uh, it's something uh, uh, imi something that imitate uh, the popular uh, Russian genres. Uh, another work of this kind is uh, the novel of Yaakov Schlechter, the second coming of the teacher from Qumran, uh, 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 something very, very special. Uh, uh, it depicts the philosophical and uh, mystical education of a Jewish saint, uh, you can say. And please look here, you see, that in Hebrew, this genre doesn't exist. Why? It's, I think it's a very interesting question. And there are maybe uh, the uh, reason is uh, that uh, uh, the Israeli history uh, was so phantasmagoric may, and uh, also so uh, uh, the Jewish world, the Israeli world is so full by the reminiscences from uh, a, a Bible and Midrashim that it's a problem to uh, uh, compete against it for the Israeli uh, Hebrew fantasy writers. And in a, here we uh, uh, come to one more genre, also important. And it is an alternative past uh, that includes uh, 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 fantasy. Uh, 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 it's a uh, quasi-historical magical epic, alternative history, fantasy, transported into a distant past. The plot develops against the backdrop of more or less recognizable geography. Uh, it's a tremendously popular genre in Russian. I can show here in the table only the most valuable uh, uh, books. Uh, it's very, 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 very many uh, uh, titles. And you see that in Hebrew literature and also in Russian Israeli literature, this genre doesn't exist, I think, uh, because of the same reason. Utopia and dystopia. The rationalist utopia. In Hebrew literature is a, a rather old genre. Uh, the first uto uh, uto utopias, utopias were written in Hebrew in uh, uh, the end of the 19th century. But from the uh, 20s of the uh, uh, 12th century, from the 20th of the uh, 20th century, the new uh, utopias uh, doesn't appear in Hebrew. In Russian, it's also a rather old genre. It uh, was popular in the 60s of the 20th century, and it disappears 
from the Russian literature uh, in the end of the 20th century and in the beginning of 21. This genre doesn't exist in uh, 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 Hebrew fantastic uh, literature. Uh, uh, except the uh, books of one also prolific one, Pesach or Pavel Amnoel, uh, like People of the Code, Three Universe, The Last Day, The First Day, this uh, utopia uh, in this uh, 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 works is uh, linked to the uh, messianic theme uh, and uh, the coming of the messianic age is described in Greek mystical details taken from Hasidic and Kabbalistic sources. Uh, this is not, uh, I think, utopias uh, uh, in essence, because uh, these texts lack the typical details of the social organization of the new world, uh, but are full of Kabbalistic and Hasidic reminiscences. Dystopia. <clears throat> it's interesting to know that dystopia is the most uh, popular genre in Hebrew uh, fantastic. I should say that the number of dystopias that were published in previous 20 years uh, is comparable to the Russian ones, even though Hebrew readers number about one twentieth of the number of readers in Russian. It's very interesting. Lama, the most popular uh, uh, fantastic genre in Hebrew literature is dystopia. The, uh, uh, and uh, another interesting question is why in the Russian Israeli literature, it, it's uh, uh, rather few texts in this genre. Some of them, like Dystopia of Lenore Guralik, are written not in Israel. She is uh, the writer that lives in two countries. Uh, the texts of Anna Fine, they're brilliant, uh, while uh, they are mini dystopias. And uh, the letter of the dresser of Mikhail Knudson, uh, sometimes people say that it's dystopia, uh, I think it's not. And uh, the genre of this uh, text is, uh, I think, uh, 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 have to be discussed. So we, I want to... Just a couple more minutes. Yes, yes. It's, uh, I want to uh, uh, sum up uh, the discussion. I can say that uh, we have seen the general panorama of the three literatures, what there is and what there is not. What is not there, what is absent in Russian Israeli fantasy. There are almost no attempts to rewrite history. Almost entirely missing are magical plots unfolding in an alternative past except some adventure novels. Totally absent uh, magical epics depicting an ideal past, a genre which is extremely popular in Russia. Russian language Israeli fantasy markedly differs from the Russian in this respect and strongly resembles the Hebrew. In both Russian and Hebrew literature, a place of prominence is occupied by dystopia. In Hebrew literature, dystopias are central. This genre is almost entirely lacking in Russian language, Israeli literature. Russian Israeli literature fantasy focuses on the past and the present much more than the future. In my view, this has to do with the enormous effort of integrating into the new cultural and 
the mental milieu here and now. As Roman Katzman write it, in Russian Israeli literature, culture takes on ontological meaning, fusing with being as such, while the writing of the author fuses with the act of existence in the claimed culture as in the only reality. That's it. Thank you very much. Lots of very interesting uh, information. Our next uh, presenter is uh, Zlata Zaretsky, who is a researcher of Jewish culture and the author of The Phenomenon of Israeli Theater. Uh, and her paper is titled Phenomenon of Russian Language Israeli Dramaturgy. Please. <clears throat> Dear colleagues, I greet all of you on the first global conference devoted to the Israeli-Russian literature. In our time of virtual reality, triumph of virus, economical crush, spiritual darkness, expiration of anti-Semitism, culture as wrote Nikolai Rerich in 1930, is the way to serve light. For me, Israel-Russian dramaturgy is now a brightest example. Dramaturgy in general, and now especially in new pandemic time, is a public free form of self-expression, the literary and theater way for critics and longing for ideal spiritual religion now the same in new space after Russia, but still closed and absolutely unknown. Why? There are a lot of reasons inside and outside the subject. But for me, the main question is, what is it? What is the basis? What we are speaking about? From my point of view, Russian Israeli literature and dramaturgy as its integrative part is first of all, as Professor Katzman said, any literary fact which is connected to historical and cultural context of Israel as an original source, wherever lives creator. In this sense, the Jewish Israeli writing in Russian, like a commentary quotes to history or Agada or Torah, the same as on page of Gemara. Moreover, more further, the text from center, the closer to it can be. So every genre of art, and especially the dramatic word, may be an after sound of an original truth in his special unrepeatable aesthetic form. An oral Torah of creativity for me, the code, press mark and key to the essence of Jewish art associations, which permits to realize the process of developing Russian Israeli literature. Israeli-Russian dramaturgy wasn't interested in nobody on a phone of prose, lyrics, publicities, and stages experiments. But for me, it's value open this special dramaturgy is the mirror of person verity, a mask of his subconscious, his private contact to the muted universe, the subconscious, <clears throat> his private contact to the unit, uh, he, uh, the way to self-knowledge in new social space. I discovered it as an archetype of an opportunity for new mankind unity. I believe that after era of virus and muteness, dramaturgy especially is such individual common literature, the hidden potential theater, which can revive and transform the art of 21st century 
and bring us together again in Israel and diaspora. Dozens of unknown plays collected in this year of standstill confirmed for me the words of Hegel Belinsky Tolstoy that drama is the highest kind of poetry where the essence of art is most evident. Russian Israeli dramaturgy appeared long ago as a reaction to national history from a clash of the dream and reality, from a victimization of Jewish culture, everyday life. You can read about it in the memorial trilogy of Victoria Levitin, Ruski Teatr Yevrei, Yevrei Mayakrov, Yevreiski Vaprosa Sovetski Teatr, Russian Theatre and Jews, and the Jews is my blood, Jewish question, and the Soviet theater. According to Levitin, a Jewish dramaturgy in Russia, in Russian, appears as a result of persecution on languages in Yiddish and Hebrew, influence of an enlightenment and passionate desire for national theater. By this way, in Russian Empire started in the edge of 20th century, the place of Sholom Ash, God of Revenge, Osip Dimov's Blooming Land and Listen Israel, David Eisman the Third Bash, Jakob Gordian Overseas Satana, the play of Russian Nikolai Krasheninikov, Cry of Rachel, was performed in Hebrew in Tel Aviv in 1925 in Oval Theater. In parallel, in 2030s, here in Eretz, Israel appeared in Russian text of Abraham Vysotsky, Blood of the Maccabees, Solomon Kruglikov's In the Red Vices, Naum Shimkin's trilogy, Kings Shaul, David, and Solomon. Further, in the 40s, arises the phenomenon of Jewish theater and dramaturgy during the Holocaust, including territories of the former USSR. There is in conquered spaces, in unbelievable conditions in camps, Jews create and perform plays until last minute. In Ghetto Vilna, Riga, Vapniar, Kajitomer, Mogilev, cropped and others cropped up and artistic prophetic masterpieces, for example, as a dash of a trench fever of Lev Pulver around Jerusalem of Itzhak Katzenelson, joyfully Hasidim of Sami Feder, satiric cabarets of Leib Rosenthal and Katriel Broide uh, in Ghetto Vilna, exit from Egypt by Lazar Greenberg and others. This was an art of clenched fists, one of the direct spiritual sources of modern Jewish dramaturgy, especially in the USSR. After Hitler's time in 50s, 80s, in territories of dictatorship of Stalin, formed another influence to the phenomenon of Jewish Russian dramaturgy. The revival of national culture after extermination of Hebrew and Yiddish and awareness of the own aesthetics began to break out in Russian language precisely. Destruction of 1948-1952 didn't stop spiritual life of Jews. They gathered in flats and played in silence in Yiddish and Russian without any decoration what they remembered, as it was, for example, in Odessa with performer Joseph Mindlin after Gulag. Bilingualism in Schwarzer Gubenka Group in Moscow Meda in 1962 1982. Then Levick's Levin books, Clean Russian Shalom Theater, where the marks to save situation together 
with power, especially before an embroad. It couldn't be successful, so camped by Yuri Sherling in area of Birobidjan was permitted by Kaijibe in authentically musical ballet form. You know that it was based in Moscow. It was so successful in close to the national values that logically banned in 1985. On the contrary to the power gestures to revive Jewish cultural life in the USSR, there was in 1967-1989 forbidden dramatic movement in the underground theater of refuseniks with their own playwriting in Russian as a part of fight for spiritual freedom and the right to live in promised land and speak in all her Jewish languages, not only Hebrew, Yiddish, Mugrabi, Ladino, everything. Modern Israeli Russian dramaturgy realized there, especially after victory, at Six Day War in 1967. Folklore and biblical motifs from national history, culture, philosophy, were presented in secret in dozens of actual satire, Purim spiels and dramas, also through all main cities of the USSR, Odessa, Tbilisi, Saratov, Leningrad, Riga, Moscow, etc. The most Significant among them, we are never stage plays of Alexander Radovsky, The Act of God or Disaster from 1968, and Exodus, or This Man Moses, 1970, published in Samis Dat immediately by Alexander Voronoi. Purim Spiel presented as political demonstration by Boris Mavtsir and Joseph Mendelevich group in Central Synagogue in Riga in 1970. My famous brother's drama from the book of Govat Faz, directed by Mikhail Rapoport in Riga's group Mila and in Leningrad of group of Boris Divatov in 1981. The fate performed by Leonid Kelbert in Underground in 1982, written by current chairman, chairman of the Guild of Dramatists in Russia and Israeli writer Valentin Krasnogorov Feinberg, whose success in nowadays is based on aesthetic of secret art of refuse and orientation to abstract laws of successful text in general, but it's another theoretical dispute. Modern Russian Israeli dramaturgy sprouted in Jewish dissident theater was connected ideologically with Holocaust. Our train leaves for Auschwitz. The slogan of Alexander Galich illustrated in his dramas, the chosen ways and general repetition was the point. It was manifested by Jews of silence behind the Iron Curtain in the same spiritual inflexibility, organic inner freedom, intellectual peace of mind, and search for cultural origins in any danger, even in prison, as it was in catastrophe. Then, Iron Cotton failed. In 1780, the same aesthetic features with big care were displayed here in Israel in texts. Despite of freedom in open space, here in Israel, they wrote enclosed existential texts about passion in four walls, according to theory of Krasnogorov of play writing 
עם טקסט נינה ורונל, אריאל קאנה, יפים גאמר, אלכסנדר אדובסקי, בוריס גולר, and the broad Freddy Gorenstein, and Boris Goller still abroad, but in the same aesthetics. The generation of spiritually escaped created in this period text that we are in general also never performed in historical motherland, but in Europe, USA, Russia, why? First of all, it was an existent Realistic literature of the private perception of the past. Ariel Kana, doctor of philosophy and the author of dozens of plays, said that he is not interested in reactions, in staging his text anywhere. In the end of the 80s, he wrote here in Israel documental trilogy named Tragedy of Soviet Theater, devoted to three Russian Jews created a glory of Soviet stage, Pseulot Meyerhold, Alexander Tairov, and Anatoly Efros. As he wrote in preface, everything intertwined in their life in one tragic role, the conviction of being needed, usefulness of the cause to which life is devoted, Gen opposition to the compressed majority, constant need to do the best and much more than confronted with the dictatorship, dictatorship, totalitarian thinking power. It was a story about Soviet intelligence in general, from which every self-minded person perceived as you. This conflict Ariel Kana illustrated in plays about the high art and the low reality, Maestro, Brothers, Merhold, Delirium, but in the same low measures was described by him picture of Israel on contrast to the high values of new repatriates in dramas, Democracy La Democracy, I Am Fedra, New Visit of an old lady without knowledge of Jewish philosophy until now. Hate to Judaism as religion. The author continues until now being Israel only absolutely closed dissident with an idea of an importance of Russian globalism and insignificance of the historical motherland. Nina Baronel, on contrary, as creator, was presented in New York, Tel Aviv, Jerusalem, London, Italy, Germany, even in underground of 80s in Leningrad. Why? She was from the same generation of awakened and liberated, but her freedom she understood as an unlimited Jewish space with a sense of national background only just opened, unknown, respected. From this vision, angle, we are written the place dust and ashes, dry cleaning time, resurrected, cashier of eternity. As he said in New York Times, it was a truth about a human soul in the grip of an in human regime, but for me, the main play of Nina Voronel was Excuse Me, Hannah Ann, or The Book of Our Days, written in 1975 after Yom Kippur War and still unstaged. The famous Jewish archetype about settling dead in life dissolved here in subconscious of modern Israelis predetermines their unaffected reactions. The action unfolds in the form of a myth, acquiring through its reflection a mystical large scale meaning, the book of our days, depicted here in general psychodrama as an image of inner breeze. This dictates to heroes personal transformation, catharsis, available here only by dialogue with souls 
of unforgettable loved ones. This is the story about Lava, tank crushed idealist in one of Israeli wards for independent who lived behind a widow with agadic name Leia. Kabbalistic Lava of Shlomo Ansky determined to reach paradise at the cost of death, turned by Nina Voronel from Hanan to Hanan, the symbol of the first original homeland where God ordered Abraham to go. The personal story of a failed love with Hanan unfolds by Nina Voronel as a ceremony of spiritual account to values of Israel, repentance to the past for the sake of its continuation in the present. Place of Dina Voronel, the same as her prose and journal 22, found it together with her husband, were an existential key to the time of 70s, 80s and um, an attempt to overcome the Soviet catastrophe in the native historical space as unseparable intellectual part of global free culture. In general, the dramatists of 70s, 80s were oriented to achievements of Soviet imperial theater, felt liberated as part of unlimited world culture, but absolutely disconnected to real Israeli theater as an image of modern Jewish identity. The most important for every playwright was, is until now to create from the point of view of Flyer, a man of the world, 90s, until now, 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 221 is the, in these 30 years, appears A couple here. more minutes, I'm so sorry. Just, just a couple more minutes. Go, go ahead. I need a little bit to finish. Five minutes at most. Five minutes is enough. Thank you. In these 30 years, appears here as main tendency another opposite dramaturgy. After crash Russian Egypt and Exodus more than two millions to Israel in 19s, the Jews became to ask for, for in history and culture of real state their own roots. All our dramaturgy of this period possible to define from two poles. From one side, the mental codes of history and culture of Russia as global value system, and on contrary, from the point of biblical civilization in Israel at the center of diaspora. The meeting dialect till crash two traditions led in result the creation of the harmony in third art of Neophytes. There are a lot of examples. Idiot, improvisation on Dostoevsky by an author of Gesher, Theater of Genialia, where Russian text was presented through Jewish myth about Messiah. It's time to get the stones by Yuli Kim, actual libretto of Solomon's Proverbs Wooden theater of Leona Gulansky about blood repatriates price for Israel. Naomi, nowadays choose of Judaism of Boris Eskin. Hamsin, comedy of menace in Israel by Arkady Krumer, and etc. Uh, I must say, Cabaret Brut by Vladimir Vorobyov, multi genre performance for immersion into the reality of the catastrophe as discovery what was closed in the USSR in 201. The most interesting such now fits dramaturgy from aesthetic point of view was Tanakh trilogy by Mark Azov, Springs King of Blackheads, 
Iftah Monogamos and the last, last day of Sodom, the philosophical topical acute dialect of new Israelis about national identity, self-identification, personal roots through the Bible. Directed with huge success the, in Theater Galilee in 1997, 206. What were the secret of Mark Azov? the hero of Second World War, the author of Arkady Raikin, genius laughing man that came to Israel in the age of 70 and created until the end in 211 new encrypted art. He explained me in 206, I'm a poet, I need masks. I hate realism. As far from concrete reality crash textures as most strong is analogy. Tanakh gave me the possibility of universal generalization. Truth attracts me in Tanakh. There is no black and white Jews. Don't spare any of their writers, not God himself. The plots and images of the Tanakh are as contrary as life itself. In writing, I compare two truths, historical, Tanakhical, and recent. This is how the mask appears artistic image generalization. The verity of history and up to the minute combined give drama, translated encrypted poetry. The crash of two truths leads to an aesthetic explosion, the release of huge semantic energy. It can save because helps to realize where we are now. Don't be afraid to tell the truth. One thing is clear to me, the further from the obvious, the closer to the truth, this is the secret of art. The last premiere in 221 in Theater Micro, Angels of Judy by Irina Gorelik, performs on sacred text, the book of Judith, built as open corridor of time in one space with the question, can a weak woman be a national hero? Masterpiece created in pandemia, the perfect evidence of ongoing searches for the third art in Russian Israeli dramaturgy, which is now in general an integrative part of Israel cultural reality. Thank you for this uh, rich presentation. And last but not least is the paper by uh, Ilyana Promyshlansky, who is a PhD student at bar -Ilan University. Uh, she researches the current state of literature of the 90s by immigrants from the former Soviet Union, focusing on a comparison between literatures of various immigrant communities, immigration from the, Soviet, from the uh, former Soviet Union versus immigration from North African countries. And her paper is titled The Recent State of the Russian-Israeli Literary Process. Please. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, one minute, please. Uh, okay. Uh, the Israeli-Russian language literature of the second decade of the 21st century is a complex phenomenon whose understanding goes beyond literary discourse. On the one hand, it, it continues the poetic and semantic tradition and thematic traditions established in the past decades. At the same time, it is already possible to distinguish new poetic and semantic directions. These changes are related to global and local phenomena in social, political, and economic areas, such as globalization, uh, globalization, influence of electronic networks, and the multilingualism of society. In order to better understand the distant character of the Russian language literature in Israel, we can compare it with the literature of immigrants from the countries of North Africa and Ethiopia. Um, 
Uh, Professor Haviv Abdaya defines the main direction of the development of the literature of emigrants from those areas as the creation of symmetry between history and geography. This means that characters in this literature begin a new life in Israel. They decide to break away from the heritage of the past in order to create a new history. The Aliyah to Israel is a new beginning of the life story. As a result, a symmetry is created between the new place and personal history. For example, in the novels of writers such as Ele Amir and Sami Michael, the protagonists strive to prove themselves in the Israeli reality, gain equal status, and create a new life story. In El Amir novel, Jasmine, the new immigrants become a combat soldier. In this way, they prove the right to be true Israelis. Sacrificing from the homeland brings them pride and a sense of identity. Uh, in the novel by Sami Michael, Chatzotzra uh, Bevadi, Trumpet in the Vadi, the main protagonist is a new immigrant. He does not really know Hebrew. He does not understand the Israeli society very well, but he enlists in the army and in, in, in this way expresses his identification with the Israeli society. A similar phenomenon exists in the works of immigrant writers from Ethiopia. For instance, in the Mangisto Grameo story, the protagonists are willing to compromise the folk tradition in order to fulfill the dream of Aliyah to Israel. Dalia Bitwalin Sherman was called How the World Becomes White. The title clearly expresses the change in the protagonist reality. Uh, immigrant literature of the Russian, uh, in the Russian language chose a different way. The role of geographical space is diminished and the protagonists move to different areas of time. The new situation creates a conflict between time and, and place, and the character search for the way to recreate the new symmetry between time and space, between history in geography. Time is becoming an important param uh, parameter on the ongoing process of self-determination, of awareness of reality and of the change of accepted paradigms. A study of the Aliyah literature shows the existence of different direction in solving the, uh, in solving the problem of the symmetry between time and place. In this discussion, two group of writers can be identified. The writer of the older generation and those of the younger one. Among the older writers, you can see the symbolic, philosophical, and linguistic direction to the solution of time-space problem. You can see in the Dina Rubina works, for instance, the symbolic solution of the space-time problems. In the last decade, Two tri uh, trilogies by Dina Rubina have been published. Ruska Kanarika, that contain, uh, contains the books Jotuchim Golas Budnisin, and Napoleon of Abos, that contain, uh, contains books Rebina Veklin, Beli Loshedi, Angel Skerajok. Uh, Rubina protagonists are not the new immigrant who can be described metaphorically as arising from the sea like the protagonist to the Moshe Shamir's novel he walked in the fields. They are the citizen of the world. They move between the open spaces of the big world. They cannot determine the fate, the, uh, the nation nationality, and they belong in to a certain territory. As a, a return to the past, to the family heritage, allows them to define the world in the complex reality. It's important to note the writer Leonid Levinson. In the 2000s, uh, he published several books. For example, the novel uh, Deti Pushkina, a collection of stories, Kalichistva Stupenik Nimi, it's not 
the Levinson's works as an expression of nostalgia. The protagonists try to return to the past and re-experience the special atmosphere. This process is the basis of the character's progress in reality and in making contact with the environment. For example, in the story Unas Kisari, the protagonist tries to connect between the geographical location and Caesarea and the emotional need to return to the past and celebrate the new year according to the tradition, uh, to the Russian tradition. Um, the problem of symmetry between history and geography is reflected in, in the works of Alex Stern. Alex Stern called his first novel, Protocol Sionskich Mudritsov, Matryoshka novel. As is a Matryoshka, more and more layers of time are revealed in the novel. They describe the Israel period, the Holocaust, and events of biblical period in the books. Time becomes the basis of the process of understanding the existing paradigms and uh, the attempt to change them. In his subsequent novel, Alex Stern continues to write in this style. In the last decade, he published several uh, uh, novels and stories, Subotni Got, Abichne Ludi, Arfei Vridi, Karaleva Sudbe, the, divi uh, the division of time to the layers and the creation of a symmetry between the time and place, between history and geography, serve as a central way of understanding and describing reality. Another way to solve the conflict between time and space can be identified in the Yaakov Schechter works. In his work, the process of comprehending realities connects to retelling of Hasidic stories and the mysterious heritage of Kabbalah. A reference to religion is another means of resolving the conflict between time and space in Russian language literature in Israel. The writer Anna Fine also refers to the religious perception. The two stories were recently published in the Novosti Nideli newspaper supplement. In these stories, she examines reality from the Jewish perspective and in relation to the tradition of Judaism. Anna Fine also presents the linguistic direction to the solution of the conflict between time and space. The language, uh, her language combines the word from Russian and Hebrew. For example, in her book, Chroniki Treaty of Tapade, you can see the new term of Tapade. Uh, this term, create from two words in Russian and Hebrew, Aftobus, the bus, and Intifada, the tragic period in Israeli history, the period of explosions on buses and uh, innocent victims. Or in her story, Tritykovska Baldarea, you can see a new term Baldarea that combine two words in Russian. A Galerea that represents the Central Art Gallery in Moscow and the word Baldet is it can be translated as confusion as a result of using various drugs or alcohol. In conclusion, we, we can see that the Russian language literature in Israel tries to deal with the symmetry between time and space in a different way, symbolic, sentimental, linguistic, poetic, and philosophical. Another group of writers is that of the young one. Uh, when they immigrated to Israel in the 90s as, as children not teenager, grew up and received secondary education or part of secondary education in Israel, received academic education in Israel or in Europe, and uh, successfully integrated into various jobs. At the same time, they chose to write and publish in the Russian language. In this group, you can identify the main trend of dealing with the conflict of time and place. Some writers continue to uh, the linguistic, symbolic, and philosophical tendencies of the older generation. These writers uh, like Victoria Reicher and Dmitry Deitch. Uh, alongside them, 
the azos will choose the direction of creating symmetry between time and space that is adopting the narratives accepted in the literature of North Africa and Ethiopia. For example, in the Alisa Bialski and Victoria Reutemann Aronovich book, the characters go back in the time, but eventually come back in the Israeli reality and the Israeli vision. <clears throat> the same time, another kind of literature that can be called, nom uh, called nomadic literature has been developing. Is this literature whose uh, protagonist move in the space of Israel uh, and the world without making a real connection to the concrete points of the space? Time also changes its flow and the characters live from the past to the present in search of themselves. The writers such as Marta Kitro, Karen Klimovsky, Lenore Goralik. The, uh, these writers relate to the Israeli reality from the point of view of the guest. They boundary the endless space of the world. This transition between the concrete, metaphorical and virtual territories. Uh, for example, in Marta Kitro's novella, Pisma Bistena Moem, the characters wander the streets of Tel Aviv. She feels distant from everything that is happening. She does not understand the language. She is unable to make a connection to people. She defends her status as a nomad. In conclusion, it can be seen that the conflict between history and geography is one of the central scenes in the Aliyah literature. Many authors uh, examine the connection between the past and the present and between the zero and here as a means to expressing the word of the protagonists. The writers of the older generation choose to move away from the concrete spaces as a, as a means of creating symmetry between history and geography. Among the younger generation writers, we can see a continuation of this trend. Trend along with this, also a new direction of creating symmetry, uh, since the literature of North Africa and Ethiopia repatriation. And finally, we can see the nomadic way to solve the time-space conflict in the Russian literature in Israel. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, wonderful, very interesting uh, conceptual presentation and, and very interesting panel overall. So I think we have quite a bit more time for uh, questions and, and comments uh, I, till one o'clock. Raman, yes, till one o'clock? Um, I mean, one o'clock my time, sorry. I guess uh, Israeli time is what... Uh, a little later. <laughs> no, I guess I guess we have another twenty minutes. Okay. All right. Okay. So please, questions, comments, uh, and uh, yeah. A question. Uh, Stephanie, please. Yeah, a, a question now about the difference between the earlier and the later ones, and you mentioned that the later ones there's seem to be more of an alienation. And that seems in a certain way, perhaps surprising because I mean, one would assume they're, perhaps the earlier ones wanted to be more integrated, um, but yet the later ones would have a better knowledge of Hebrew and one would think, and then they came as they were younger. I mean, it's sort of interesting if they would be more alienated than the earlier generation, which really didn't get into the Hebrew. Does anybody want to take up that comment or, or we can come back to it? Maybe I could, could ask a question of uh, uh, Elena Rimon. Um, and, and I was wondering what your thoughts are on the fact that just so many Jews were drawn to science fiction uh, in the Soviet Union. Uh, not just the Strugatsky brothers, of course, but but many many others, right? What is that? What is the connection between uh, sci-fi and and fantasy, for that matter, right? That 
that that, that attracted uh, Jews to it, particularly in the in in the Soviet case. Unmute yourself. Okay, it's a very interesting question. You know, I uh, really didn't think about it, but uh, I think uh, that you see the huge amount of Jews writing uh, science fiction in uh, 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 Soviet Union at 60s. Not only Stugatsky, but uh, uh, many uh, uh, young and uh, older uh, writers uh, that uh, wrote fantastic. And uh, you see, uh, I, I think that uh, I tried to show it in my presentation that in the uh, 21st uh, century, uh, uh, the um, science fantasy uh, doesn't exist. Uh, instead of this, uh, there is fantasy. And uh, epic fantasy, magic epic, and all these things. I didn't check it uh, uh, exactly, but I don't think that you see much Jews among the authors. And this is the most uh, prolific trend in uh, the fantasy that is written in Russian. And I wanted to try to uh, show that uh, the only one writer in uh, Israel that uh, writes uh, a quasi-historical fantasy novels, adventure novels, it's uh, uh, simply uh, something like what is in the fashion in uh, Russia. I don't see uh, uh, interesting and serious works in this genre uh, in Israel, uh, in Russian language. And uh, so it would end. Mm -hmm. yeah, thank you. Are the Strugatsky brothers translated into Hebrew or, or no? Uh, I didn't check it. I don't, I don't know. I have to ask. Maybe Denise knows. I know he, he wrote a wonderful essay on the Strugatsky brothers some time ago. Uh, I know, I know. Uh, picnic al Shule Aderach, yes. Uh -huh. uh, the author that is uh, uh, translated into Hebrew is Akunian. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And uh, there is a kind of fantasy in his work sometimes. Strugatsky, maybe. Other other questions, comments? Uh, Claudia, please. I think, excuse me, I just wanted to raise my hand, but <laughs> didn't. So I just uh, just um, I wanted to ask a small question to uh, Yelena. Um, can we speak about second or third generation, post-migrant generation of writers in Israel um, who were writes in Russian? And if if yes, uh, this may be a sort of um, if we can absorb sort of shifts in identity in in poetics and um, in the sort of um, philosophy, so to say. Uh, literary philosophy. It's just a very broad question, but I think you didn't mention it. If there is, in general, a problem of second and third generation post-migrant writing. Thank you. Uh, the uh, second generation, uh, the philosophical of the uh, second generation is the process of self-determination in uh, Israel, in the uh, global world, and uh, the process of uh, <clears throat> uh, 
uh, the experience to create a new meaning in the um, in the very, very complex realities, uh, multicultural, multilingualistic reality. And uh, this is the central themes of this literature. the uh, second generation, uh, in the second generation, we can see the uh, writers in Russian language and the uh, Hebrew language. And uh, two groups uh, 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 describe the process of, uh, of uh, self-determination in a a multilingualist reality and the a multicultural reality and um, in the in the same groups. It's okay. <laughs> yes, I think so. I just thought about this this notion of post memory, for example, or. Um, second and third generation memory and uh, we uh, don't have to speak about trauma uh, memory but uh, uh, I don't see the trauma but uh, they describe mm -hmm. the memories of a uh, excuse me mm -hmm. uh, may, uh, may the memories of a uh, uh, perestroika, it is memories to hands, it's a memory of heritage of the former Soviet Union histories and uh, uh, describes the history and the family, uh, they describe the uh, uh, legacy of society of the family, but uh, uh, but uh, they uh, come back to Israeli, rea uh, Israeli realities. Uh, okay. You. Thank you. Thank you. Other, other questions? Uh, Alexei, please. Thank you so much. My, my question for uh, Elena Rimon. Uh, first of all, thank you so much for a great presentation and it was wonderful to listen. So my question uh, about uh, the situation, you said what we have only a few examples of dystopia in Russian Israeli literature. And my question is, how do you explain for yourself personally the fixation, the kind of fixation of most uh, Russian Israeli literature on the past and the lack of desire to look into the future, critically look at the future. It's, my yeah, it's a very interesting question. I ask myself really whether there are uh, utopias or dystopias that show us in Russian literature, in Russian Russian literature, I mean, that show us something really new in the future, not something that uh, continues uh, the trends uh, from the past, but uh, something uh, really new. And I don't know, you know. That's a very interesting question because uh, uh, instead of uh, utopia and, or utopias and dystopias, uh, uh, we see alternative history uh, the trends that start something in uh, the uh, uh, epoch of revolution of or before the World War II. And uh, I think the uh, answer on this question will be somehow connected to the um, one more question. Why the quasi-historical adventure novels and epics are so, so popular. 
because uh, uh, one critic said that uh, Russia is a country with unpredictable past. Uh, 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 I can say what I, what I think. I think that people that uh, write this uh, text and read them are afraid of the future. Uh, they are not uh, 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 happy with their present and uh, they regret for their past. But the past is something material and uh, uh, it's something that you can uh, grasp. And future is really unknown and uh, even uh, 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 dark. I think this is the question. So mm -hmm. why we see the lack of utopias in the Russian people literature, it's an interesting question. And uh, I, it's, uh, I, I have to say about it something, but I have no time. We see that the only writer that writes something uh, like Utopia, Utopias, it's uh, really not Utopias in the, uh, normal, that it's not normal utopias. It's something a messianic age, Beata Mashiach. And I think it's uh, something uh, really, it differs from uh, 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 the Western utopias and the Russians as well. So I think that uh, what we see with when we analyze the general system of the Hebrew fantastic, this uh, fixation on the present. I think so. Thank you so much. Any more final maybe question or two comments? Uh, uh, may I say something? I like very much presentations of Elena Pomyslansky. I think uh, uh, she, it, 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 this is a, an opportunity of several directions of uh, exploring and investigating. Uh, and uh, I like it very, very much. I, I, I don't know whether you can check it, all these directions that she presented, but uh, it's something very, very, I think uh, uh, it, it's a promise of a very, very interesting uh, 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 inquiry. So I'm very glad for you, Nemo. Thank you very much. Elena is my teacher in uh, oh, Ariel yeah. University. Oh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm really glad Thank you. Uh, to see that uh, you, uh, how to say it, I said to me in Hebrew, I, uh, I leave it on here. <laughs> yes. Toda toda. <laughs> Maybe on this encouraging and happy note, we shall we shall conclude. Uh, thank you so much to everybody. And Raman is our, our organizer. Do you want to say final final words? Or? Yes. Uh, thank you very much, Marat. Uh, it was a really great session. Um, I enjoyed everyone of uh, presentations in this conference. I'd like to thank all of you for participating in this conference and in working with me all the and all this year and this was a amazing experience for all of us and uh, thank you very much for making your effort to participate in this conference and many thanks to all our guests colleagues and writers who are with us today it was really great and um, 
we are, the, this uh, symposium is closed, but I believe that the research in the history of Russian Israeli literature uh, just in the beginning. Uh, so be well and uh, thank you again and see you at uh, other our events and other opportunities. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for a month, Katzman. Thanks. See you. Thank you. Thank Bye. you. Yeah. Thank you all. You Thank were you. great. Thank you. Bye.